ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञानतिरांद से ज्ञानाजनशलाखय चक्षुन्मील येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतरे श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामने नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे Teachings of Queen Kunti, Chapter 18, Liberation from Ignorance and Suffering. The Lord, however, out of His causeless mercy, because He is more merciful to the suffering living beings than they can expect. Uh, what is causeless mercy? He is more merciful to the suffering living beings than they can expect. appears before them and renovates the principles of devotional service comprised of hearing chanting remembering serving worshiping praying cooperating see cooperating this is not part of the navavida bhakti but propa this thing cooperating mm, praying cooperating and surrendering unto him so this is very important you know i see generally lot of devotees have uh, too many issues dealing with other devotees you know we bring our material mindset into bhakti and so then it causes lot of challenges mm. i personally face lot of issues with people expecting more than they should expect from me right like for example they think that i'm uh, helping them in bhakti but they expect beyond that like i have to be nice to them i have to be <laughs> you know i have to smile to them uh, so this is and that, then that results in so many you know like you should not do is me in front of others so many kinds of all kinds of things right and so they don't understand actually clearly what uh, bhakti is what these uh, what is the difference between a spiritual relationship and a material relationship mm. we don't want to get stuck in material relationship but the same conditioning comes in spiritual relationships also so anyway so the point here is in spite of all that we should still cooperate you know we should still work together because we have to push the mission forward so this is very very important and sometimes you know there are leaders and there are conflicts and propat clearly writes yes in executing krishna's service there can be differences in opinion but you should still cooperate and move on right so um, we see so many conflicts you know uh, happening all the time uh, but in, in spite of all that because everybody is trying to serve krishna uh, somehow you know we have to just go on and the more purity we develop uh, the more uh, easier it will be to execute krishna consciousness as we propat said leader means one who is chanting and reading shravanam kirtanam is top class he is the leader right uh, not somebody with uh, you know actually uh, rajoguna is required for leaders in material world but in uh, spiritual on the spiritual platform it is satvaguna which is required and the person might engage other people who might be in more rajoguna than him to you know to do different services but the leader himself should be an expert in shavanam kirtanam because then only cooperation will happen because then so many people differences have to be managed etc etc <clears throat> and uh, you know it's a it's a challenge anyway so that's a slight digression but um, so two things here lord is more merciful than we deserve than we expect that is his causeless mercy we should always remember this keep this in mind saying that krishna is always willing to help us krishna is always willing to give us his his mercy but the real question we have to ask is whether we are are we ready for this mercy hmm uh, sometimes it's difficult to understand what is krishna's mercy hmm, propa says some 
Now, sometimes Krishna will take away. Right? And that is his mercy. But we can't understand. We can't understand. But Krishna is always giving us mercy. And the one who has faith that Krishna is always merciful and is giving mercy, he will make progress. See, the beauty of bhakti is it doesn't require any kind of, it's not qualification based. As in, uh, like it's not like, okay, can you give class nicely? Can you sing nicely? Can you do something nicely? No, it doesn't depend on any of this. It simply depends on faith in Krishna. Right? So, neophyte means less faith, komal faith, very pliable, very easily breakable faith. And advanced devotee means full faith, 100% faith. To the extent that, you know, those devotees are not even bothered where their next meal is going to come from. That much faith. So, Krishna consciousness is just, Prabhupada writes, it's just increasing faith. That is making advancement. <clears throat> How can you, on what basis can we have this faith? Because Krishna has uh, causeless mercy. Uh, while Krishna is equal to everybody, uh, but he is more inclined towards his devotees. So, he is happy to help. And he's, he doesn't care, I mean, what this material world, what people think about him. Mm. He's happy to help, right? We should be ready to take that mercy. Mm. And uh, taking that mercy means giving up our conditioning, surrendering to the Guru, like I said yesterday, giving up our independence. That is mercy. And mercy, people think mercy actually means my material life is improved, mm, my financial status is improved. Uh, my health has improved. <laughs> this is not mercy. In fact, by giving all this, uh, sometimes, you know, people get all this and devotees might become casual about bhakti. Hmm? So, causeless mercy means progress, making progress. Hmm? Adoption of all the above mentioned items or any one of them can help a conditioned soul get out of the tangle of nescience and thus become liberated from all material sufferings Created by the living being. Mm. Also, we should keep remem remembering, reminding ourselves. Our material sufferings are created by us. Why? Because we are illusioned by external energy. What is illusion by external energy means? What does this mean? Illusion by external energy. One simple root cause of this illusion. Anybody? Prabhuji, relative <clears throat> with the body, I am the yeah. body. Yeah, I am the body. I am this body. Right, so this is the root cause of everything. I think that I am this body. Right, I am not this body. And uh, uh, like I said before, Prabhupada used to keep saying, you are not body, you are spirit soul. And devotees used to ask, why Prabhupada, you keep repeating the same thing? Because even after telling it thousand times, you won't understand. You are simply hearing, that's all. And so like that, Everything that we do, actually, we are completely illusioned by external energy. You know, sometimes I just think, oh, why am I getting driven into all this? And simply one second, I think I realize, oh, I'm just thinking that I'm the body and I'm just going on in that consciousness. Uh, and, you know, it's, yeah, it's both effort as well as uh, strict sadhana, which can actually help us. Because for, for coming out of this, we require causeless mercy. Cause this mercy of devotees, cause this mercy of Guru, cause this mercy of Krishna. Right? Because we are so badly stuck. This is moha. Moha. Moha means illusion. We are illusion. We are just thinking I and mine, I and mine, I and mine, all that time. That is why Krishna doesn't come into the into the picture. Because this I is so powerful and that our concern for ourselves, we are not, not the real concern. But uh, the illusion concern about ourselves, which means connected to the body, is so much that we cannot go beyond it and get attached to any other subject. This body, me, I and mine is the most important subject for us to get attached to. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to keep fighting, 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 fighting. The progress in bhakti is not easy. While the process is easy, because we don't follow it properly, it seems to be difficult. And actually, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Susukham Kartum Abhyayam. Actually, blissful and it is eternal. Easy to perform, Prabhupada says. It is easy to perform for those whose mind is disciplined or just willing to accept whatever Acharyas are saying. 
but for others it is difficult because we'll come up with thousand reasons why i will not be doing certain something which i actually i should be doing right so this is all illusion we are driven by illusion we just losing time spoiling our life this particular type of mercy is bestowed upon the living entity by the lord in the form of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu see we should understand this actually this is another tattva which doesn't stick in our heads right the mercy of krishna is million fold you know increased uh, with chaitanya mahaprabhu and he is freely distributing without looking at qualification now this is a very important thing to understand when mahaprabhu is giving krishna bhakti he is not looking at qualification meaning some come someone comes in touch with devotees adho shraddha tatha sadhu sanga uh, they start engage in bhajana kriya you know then they initiated and so on and so forth now mahaprabhu is not looking at qualification mahaprabhu is not looking at are you pure enough because on the path of maha gnana you know one has to be pure Mm, but on the path of bhakti nothing no prerequisites uh, so freely distributing this is what it means by when we say freely from chaitanya mahaprabhu freely distributed love of god which means that he didn't really seek material qualification of a person spiritual qualification nothing he freely distributed but the expectation is that once we take the path of bhakti bhakti purifies process of bhakti purifies so though we might be animals when we come into krishna consciousness after we come into krishna consciousness we may we should become human beings which means cultured what is the difference between animals and human beings cultured and uncultured hmm. there are four legs two legs or we can go into all that but basic difference is cultured and uncultured so if we come to human form of life and also again still remain uncultured uncultured even after raksha getting bhakti before getting bhakti we remain uncultured that is animalistic but after coming into bhakti we should become cultured uh, we should become pure in our dealings we should be, become pure in our way of thinking etc etc that is the mercy of chaitanya mahaprabhu without qualification he is given entrance and by entering into this university uh, we will actually develop those qualities mm, so we should accept this mercy that is why you know when we are chanting every day that prayer to the pancha tattva is the most important you know we have to fall at their feet and beg for mercy saying that i'm nonsense you know my chanting is a nonsense please only you can save me you can bestow mercy so that is a special mercy of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in this very important words the words bhavesmin mean in this material world the word bhava bhavesmin sorry the word bhava also means grow and it refers to that which has taken birth in the material world there are six kinds of changes first there is birth then growth then whatever has born uh, grows stays for some time produces some by products dwindles finally vanishes these six changes are called shad vikara the body for example takes birth at a certain date then it grows stays for some time from the body comes so many by products in the form of sons and daughters and then the body becomes old and weak and finally when it is very old it dies normal process but when the body is finished i am not finished see this consciousness itself so for example if i ask this question right um when is your, when is your birthday what will you say what is the answer hmm, suppose i ask akshay prabhu when is your birthday Prabhuji, I'll give the date of my body's birthday because that of is how this body of this body's date of birth. Yeah. Right. We say I, but we will not think like that. We'll just say, ah, okay, my birth. I, you know, my I was born on whatever, blah hmm. blah blah. Correct. I was not born. This body, this body was born on this date. Right. See, from then there, we our consciousness is contaminated. simple thing like what is your birthday right so such small small things we are stuck you know so deeply stuck just an example when you say what is your, when is your what is your birthday or when is your birthday then you say mm, this date so we should understand that this body is given as a instrument i am not finished 
body is finished. When the gross body comes to an end, I am still present within the subtle body of mind, intelligence and false ego. And this subtle body carries me to another gross body. Hmm. So the everything is here. Everything is here. Uh, whatever progress or lack of progress we are experiencing is because of this mind. And mind is uncontrollable because of contaminated intelligence. And that contamination is because of this false ego. It's simple. We have false ego. So because of that intelligence is contaminated, meaning it thinks on the platform of and then I am this body and then the mind simply follows intelligence. So that is why mind is and mind is very strong. So because of continuously our intelligence has been contaminated. Now even though our intelligence is slowly improving, changing from contaminated to pure, mind is still very stubborn. Mind doesn't want to change. Hmm. So it requires constant sadhana to fix this mind. And everything is in the mind. Everything is in the mind. Our pain is in the mind. Uh, our happiness is in the mind. Everything is in the mind. We can simply say, I will do this. Krishna, please give me the mercy. I will do this. We can simply say this. Right? And try our best. Uh, but we will say, ah, I can't do it. That is all in the mind. Everything is in the mind. That is why the psychology is such a big you know, area of study. Because everything is in the mind. It's just all you know, thoughts and uh, which is not, doesn't have to be real. Like Prabhupada says, like, you know, you, you might in a dark room, you might see a rope and you might just think that it is a snake. Think means what? Mind. I don't feel good means what? Mind. I'm experiencing a lot of pain. Mind. Right? Everything is mind. You might be experiencing pain, but that saying lot of pain is mind. If you say, no, uh, I'm experiencing pain, but it's okay. Mind. Mm, we went, uh, Vrindavan and we were doing Gordhan Parikrama. So many devotees were struggling. Then I just, uh, I thought, okay, what to do? Mm, then I thought of something. And I said, mm, okay, see, actually we have only uh, 45 minutes to go. So as soon as we heard 45 minutes to go, everybody got excited. Oh, it's only 40, 45 minutes. Simply mind. A body state is same only. A body is still paining. Legs are still paining. But just mind trick, right? Oh, only 45 minutes to walk. Okay, chalo, 45 minutes will get over fast. It's just the mind. So it's all the mind. That is why Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, mind it can be your best friend or the worst enemy. Mind has to be controlled. And then Arjuna says, oh, how can we come? Vayu riva sudushkaram. He says, oh, it's more difficult than to control uh, the wind. Krishna says, yes, what you are saying is correct, but uh, Vairagyana, um, what is that verse? Um, says, by suitable practice and renunciation. Mm. Asamshayam, I uh, can't remember the verse. So, it, it just says, suitable practice, sadhana and Vairagya. So this Vairagya is very important. But see, our process of Bhakti is so beautiful that we don't actually go on a different tangent to develop Vairagya. Vairagya is automatic. Vasudeva um, Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayajitaha Janaiti Ashu Vairagyam Nanam Chai Dahi Tukam So one who does Bhakti automatically, he should develop knowledge and Vairagya and renunciation. So when we develop renunciation and when we engage in Sadhana Bhakti, mind should get controlled. We have seen, all of us have seen that our mind is now much better than what it was before. We started serious practice of Krishna consciousness. But still it has its own things. It will keep troubling us for a long time. Actually, grass body is not really so much of a problem for us. You know, it's the subtle body and more specifically mind, it is the problem. Of course, as false ego reduces, intelligence becomes becomes more pure, mind slowly and steadily starts coming under control. 
it takes time although everyone has to accept a subtle body the scientists and medical men cannot see it i have a mind and you have a mind but i cannot see your mind and you cannot see mine i have intelligence and you have intelligence but you cannot see my intelligence not can i see yours because they are very subtle similarly the spirit soul is still more subtle so what will material scientists see of it they cannot see the mind intelligence or false ego what to speak of the soul therefore they say body is everything there is nothing more however this is not a fact the fact is that the spirit soul is very very small bala agra shata bhagasya shatada kalpitasya cha the soul is 1/10000 the size of the tip of a hair suppose we were to take a hair and divide it into 100 parts could we do it no that is not possible but if we could do it and then divide it again into another 100 parts each part would be the size of the spirit soul of course this is not possible to understand by experimental knowledge so how can it be learned one must learn of this from an authority our knowledge is so imperfect that it cannot deal with such subtle affairs mm. and because the rascals cannot deal with such things they think that the matter is the cause of life rascals what is rascals scientists nonetheless they have not been able to demonstrate that life comes from matter let them take chemicals in their laboratory and produce even a small insect with hands legs and eyes every night we see many of such small insects with legs and eyes with which they approach the light from such small insects up to brahma there are 84 lakh species different forms of life among which we are traveling from body to body living one body and entering another as stated by krishna in bhagavad gita tata dehantar prapti hi therefore either we must reject krishna's word or reject the all the so called scientific theories that life comes from matter see but we still trust these scientists so much but we are pledged to krishna consciousness therefore we cannot reject krishna's word we accept krishna when he says that we have to travel from one body to another every living entity within this material world is under the influence of avidya ignorance avidya karma sangnanya tritiya shakti rishyate god krishna has many millions of potencies parasya shakti vividha eva shruyate and they have been summarized into three categories bahiranga shakti antaranga shakti tatastha shakti external internal marginal the marginal and the internal are of the same spiritual quality but the third potency the external potency is inferior vishnu shakti para prokta kshetra gnaakha tatha para avidya karma sangnanya tritiya shakti rishyate vishnu purana is material world everyone is in ignorance even brahma was ignorant until he was given knowledge by krishna therefore no one should be proud of his knowledge see because there is no end to this knowledge this is true for preachers mm. we should understand that there is no end to this knowledge everyone in this material world is a rascal the rascal yeah a particular living entity desires if i can get the opportunity to obtain the post of brahma then i can create a big universe thus he receives the body of brahma see just the desire this is the desire right and the small insect things if i can create a small hole within this room then i can live very peacefully and eat thus brahma desires to create a universe we desire to create a skyscraper and an ad desires to create a hole in a room but the quality of the work is the same we are all fools however because we do not realize that because these things are material they will not last because of ignorance we think this will be very nice that will be very nice isn't it this we all experience isn't it we might not be thinking of constructing a skyscraper but we will think oh if this situation happens it will be nice if that situation happens it will be nice material kama karma bihi we create some desire and then work work accordingly you see this is the crux of our bondage and this is the crux of our liberation hmm so we create some desire and then we work accordingly this results in so many difficulties klishanti klesha to become brahma is not very e- is not a very easy thing brahma is such a big force and it is given to a very qualified living entity who is highly advanced in austerities and penance but he is also a living being like us in america there are many citizens and president ford is also a citizen but by dint of his ardent labor and diplomacy he captured the post still he is an ordinary citizen 
President Nixon, for example, has now been dragged down and is no longer president. This is because he was an ordinary citizen. Similarly, if we like, we may also become Brahma. Therefore, Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, Kita Janma Haut Yatha Tuya Dasa Bahir Mukha Brahma Janme Nahi Asha. Let me become an insect in a place where your devotee is present. Because if I fall down in the dust of the feet of a devotee, my life will be successful. Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, Bahir Mukha Brahma Janme Nahi Asha. I would not want to be a Brahma and not be a devotee. Bahir Mukha. Bahir Mukha means not being a devotee. So, I don't want to become a Brahma, become Brahma also if I'm not going to be a devotee. Now, what does this mean? Let me become an insect in a place where your devotee is present. Uh, because if I fall down in the dust of the feet of a devotee, my life will be successful. What does this mean? What does this mean? Um, we need to follow the instructions of the We need to follow the instructions. Because many people are into this, uh, actually literally trying to take the dust of the feet of a devotee. And that is not the idea. Actually, we should not, unless allowed by uh, higher authorities, to take the dust of the devotee, meaning touching the feet. Right? But the idea is actually this, touching the feet actually means just following instructions. Hmm. So we should just become a servant of a pure devotee, that's all. And that is the Guru and senior Vaishnavas. We should just become their servants. Right? And simply follow their instructions. And see, the idea of intelligence, why should we use intelligence? If you are not able to figure out how to follow instructions, we should use our intelligence. Trying to understand, trying to figure out, else get clarification from the person who gave the instruction. Right? That is the meaning of fall down in the dust. So we have to just become we have to just become servants, that's all. Because we are in ignorance, Maya, at any time we may forget Krishna. Therefore we must always engage in Krishna consciousness so that we shall not forget him. Hmm? Now of course when I was working and I used to read, read these statements, I used to feel, oh my God, I mean I'm hopeless. My situation is hopeless. Yeah, but it's also, we are following Krishna's order if we are following Varnashrama properly. And if we are earning and using the money just for basic maintenance and using the rest of our money for Krishna, that is also Krishna's activity, so it is indirectly Krishna conscious. But of course, we should understand that at some point in life, I should come to directly engaging in Krishna consciousness. Actually, people are, again, this is one, one aspect, again, devotees are super confused. Uh, many devotees discouraged me from giving up my job because they said, anyway, you work, you do karma and then thereby serve Krishna. But Krishna never said this. As Krishna said, this is in Bhagavad Gita saying, continue your karma and offer, offer results to me. He says, Sarva Dharma and Padityaja. Of course, first he is saying karma because we have to do our duty, you know, otherwise people will escape. People will escape their duty. So Krishna is saying, do your duty, do your duty, parallel do bhakti. But then, as we make progress, what should we do? Should we continue to do karma? No. Krishna is saying Sarva Dharman, all dharma. And if that was not the case, why would Sanatana Goswami, Rupa Goswami, all these great devotees give up their business, their work, and engage full time in Krishna's service? Because that is the goal. It's not just about engaging in Krishna's service 24 hours 7. It is engaging in Krishna consciousness 24 hours 7. Right? We might be engaged in service, but we might not be in Krishna conscious. This is another problem. Because we will be in material consciousness and then we are working day, full day for Krishna and we think, oh, I am so Krishna conscious. No. It's better than working for somebody else, but the effort still has to be to improve our consciousness. And what is the how do, how do we know if our consciousness is improving or not? The way we deal with people, the way we deal with situations, that shows our Krishna consciousness. And following Krishna's instructions, Guru's instructions at every point of time, we will, we will remain Krishna conscious. We will not forget Him. So we should understand there are three levels. There are three levels, right? Or fourth level. Four, four levels. Fourth level is the lowest, right? Like material consciousness. So we are not talking about that. We don't want material consciousness. Okay? 
better than material consciousness is partial or indirect krishna consciousness wherein you know we do something like karma yoga along the alongside we do bhakti right so this is bhakti but mixed with karma hmm so we doing lot of bhakti a lot of karma and they we doing less bhakti initially uh, then what we should do gradually we should do more bhakti and less karma hmm so first is full karma second level is more karma little bhakti and there also consciousness of that karma is not for incense enjoyment nishkama karma hmm so if somebody has a doubt in this please ask me because this is very very important and you should also share this with more people because generally people are confused about this topic completely about karma ha uh, first is sakama karma sakama means with some desire right doing karma so sense gratification basically material consciousness second level is nishkama karma and if with the nishkama karma there is little bhakti it's very nice okay and then as we make progress the amount of time that we are giving for our karma should reduce the amount of time that we are giving for bhakti should increase till what time till we are in grahastha ashrama which is technically we can say 50 55 whatever after that it has to be zero karma and full bhakti now those who have read or studied chemistry that right, you will understand you know like formula vidwan gorang prabhu taught me this first is k3 k3 means karma 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 full karma right then it is k2 b1 two karma one bhakti meaning lot of karma and little bit of bhakti then it has to become k1 b2 hmm that means little karma lot more bhakti finally it has to become k0 means only b3 so we started with k3 and we should end with b3 which means we started with full karma and we ended up with full bhakti this is the path uh, not that we continue to do our karma if we continue to do our karma then we will not be able to become fully krishna conscious we will remain material conscious okay so this is that is indicated by kunti devi by words shravana smaranarhani smaranarhani the word shravana means hearing smarana means remembering and arhana means worshiping of the deity of krishna one should always engage oneself in hearing about remembering and worshiping krishna that's all this is the goal this is what we have to do and worshiping doesn't necessarily mean of course here it means worshiping the deity but for us it is engaging in service mm chavanam smaranam and basically prachar preaching all the centers of the krishna conscious movement are open only for this purpose to facilitate chanting dancing and worshiping so that we shall not forget krishna sada tat bhava bhavitah if you always think of krishna there's a chance that we shall remember krishna at the end of life ante narayana smriti so we can't achieve this if we don't change the way of our life lifestyle as we call it uh, we can't achieve this if we don't change our lifestyle but unfortunately people want to retain their lifestyle and still you know want to think of krishna all the time it is not possible right so we should change our lifestyle simple thing if you change our lifestyle this is possible and we should not do it whimsically we should not do it without proper thinking without consulting guru without consulting senior devotees we should not make changes in our life hmm a uh, whimsically just you know flick of a hat and then we suddenly start doing something else like that no we should not do that right uh, we should do after proper consultation mm, we should do. okay so i'll stop here if anybody has any questions hare krishna prabhu yeah prabhu ji you said about the levels right so um, first is sakam sakam yeah. karma and then nishkam, nishkam karma plus nishkam. little bhakti so yeah. right now i think i am at sakam karma plus little bhakti so that level is not even there means it's the lowest level only right yeah i mean it's uh, yeah it's it's okay sakam karma plus bhakti but we should very soon get over that we should mm-hmm. come to nishkam karma right we should we see we can 
desiring to just live a comfortable life is okay right but not too much sense gratification comfortable life means like i don't have to struggle for basic necessities you know okay it's not like i can't sleep on the floor and i'm being forced to sleep on the floor this is uh you know uh, live a comfortable life okay you can't sleep on a floor you want to sleep on a uh, mattress sleep on a mattress right no problem and propad actually said you spend your money eat healthy food eat dry fruits propad used to say <laughs> you know you spend your money to eat nice food nice prasadam right yeah. so that too is comfortable propad also said you can live in a comfortable home not a mansion you don't have to build a mansion for that you can live in a comfortable home uh, whatever is required for the size of your family etc etc right i mean it's just about simple living high thinking right and not earning money to simply just uh, see we will have some anarthas like for example uh, you know somebody wants to become famous in material this one etc some one or two anarthas are okay i mean it will get cleaned up but wholly and holistically wholly being a material materialistic is sakama right like which means everything that we do we are behind some return Right. Now we should not be on that platform, and then slowly we should say, okay, whatever I am doing, I will offer it to Krishna, right? So which you are already doing, so which is very nice, and that will purify. You know, the more we offer to Krishna, the more this tendency will become purified. Hmm. Of course, we we should be careful. You know, whatever responsibilities are, take care of it, and also then you know not be too worried about too much of future saving, etc. but whatever we are comfortable with you know we should offer then why this da- dana charity for grasthas because they have to start feeling that okay this money is not mine you know we will start feeling that this money is not from mine when i start offering it to krishna then that attachment to money will go which is the problem for most men most men right is this attachment to money and this attachment to money will go by doing dana by doing charity hmm uh, so this is required this is required to be done and then slowly we we should come to nishkama nishkama and bhakti okay thank you yeah okay. and please understand one thing right whatever i am saying every person will have their own time or speed or pace at which we will traverse these different paths that acharyas have given you know we shouldn't be too which we shouldn't become too frustrated Uh, we should understand okay this is what it is i mean my approach always in krishna consciousness has been okay i mean what i'm trying to achieve is like way above me it's not discouraging me but it's actually giving lot of inspiration lot of motivation to work hard you know to put put forth all my effort whatever i capability krishna has given and totally depend on mercy of guru and krishna beg for their mercy and move on right not get stuck not get stuck saying oh i am like this people are going to this self pity mode and this self pity mode is not going to help negative thinking is not going to help but we have to still know that okay i have to climb mount everest baba what is the use if i am climbing 10 steps and feeling happy about it i have to climb mount everest so let me at least go to ramnagar hill no and then i'll go to something else or maybe 10 times i'll climb up and down something i'm i'm just saying like we should know our goal and then we should put commensurate efforts right yeah, yeah, efforts in in line with what we are trying to achieve mm. otherwise we will just be happy with whatever little we are doing mm. like we'll all say ha ah, and uh, humility this artificial humility also comes in suddenly oh prabhu i am so fallen <laughs> you know this is like one famous thing in his gone oh, i'm so fallen when i say when devotees say this to my guru maharaj is on his bhakti vikas maharaj he says that is i know <laughs> he simply say i know that uh, so then that false ego is smashed at once and because we'll expect uh, you know guru to say no no it's okay you know no i know you're fallen so why do you have to say that now what are you going to do about it uh, so we have to understand that you know just we have we have to make progress but we might be at different stages we'll be patient utsaha nischaya dhairya rupa goswami says and that dhairya is very important patience is important hoga sab kuch hoga have faith in krishna just follow sincerely and we will make progress don't get too worried about oh i'm in sakama i am to make this transition okay from tomorrow everything will change not like that everything has to be like properly done not whimsically 
Okay. Yeah, thank you for this. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Okay, anything else? Anybody? Okay, then we'll close. One chakal patar best chakar pass in the beer chapati na lam pali beer vishnu bhi 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 b